So hello, welcome back um, to a new video. Um, I am also looking at my YouTube stream because we're still having uh, some issues there. Um, so um, if you like this video, please uh, like it and uh, subscribe because um, yeah, that's what I always forgot to ask, but uh, we really could like, use some more followers. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about um, the whole story about Tower Jazz versus Sony, or basically a story we saw in the in the rumor sites about Tower Jazz and uh, how they feel that uh, Nikon should not go for Sony and um, that they would uh, be more, um, I guess, better off if they join uh, Tower Jazz as a production uh, company for their sensors. And I want to point out a few things which I think uh, that combined with a story that we are also seeing that Sony should basically um, remove its uh, um, or split off its, its uh, central division as a separate company because they are making all the money, etc, etc. I personally don't think that Sony would ever do this and I want to talk to you about why I think uh, Sony would not do this. Uh, but first I wanted to show you some, uh, some uh, yeah, reasons behind it. And let's first get back to an interview which was actually posted and started uh, part of this discussion uh, with um, the manager of Tower Jazz where he at some point in, in, point in the interview talks about uh, why um, Nikon might be better off uh, leaving Sony, I guess, um, or what the danger is in, in them using Sony as a production uh, uh, company for their sensors. So uh, let's uh, move to uh, that and let's listen to what actually the manager is saying in the beginning of the interview, both on the ownership of his own company, uh, but uh, also uh, to basically what I think the whole story is about, which, uh, as you know, I've been a fan of the whole stack sensor sort of discussion, but let's listen to him and uh, see what he has to say. Then I will point to another, um, I will link this video in the description, and I will also talk about another article, what uh, we are going to talk about today is what actually a stack sensor is, and why this doesn't make any sense. If you combine what he is saying and uh, what his company is and wants to be if I listen to him and what Sony is actually doing. So uh, I will record it through the mic because it's easier so it might sound a little bit less but uh, again I will link the original interview and we will watch for about a minute. So here we go. No, we have fabs uh, all over the world. We have two fabs in Israel, two fabs in the US and three fabs in a joint venture with uh, Panasonic. So how does it compare with like TSMC, for example? So let's talk about that for a little bit because they are partly owned by Panasonic. So when they are making the argument that it would be bad to stay with the same company that both produces the sensor and owns the uh, a company, uh, a camera company itself. So they are 49% owned by Panasonic. So you can also argue a little bit, well, what are you talking about? It seems to be the same sort of conflict of interest there. But now listen to what he says. So TSMC are more focused on digital. So although they do do some analog, but they are more focused on digital. Most of their uh, sales are very deep technology nodes for digital applications. We are, we stay completely away from digital. We are focused on analog. So they stay away completely from digital, right? Now he's going to explain a little bit what that means. Completely away. Completely away. But like high-end cameras, they want to have digital stuff going yeah, on, Yeah, right? what, what you call digital, this is what we call analog. What you call analog, you call film analog, right? Yeah. But, but analog, uh, we talk about analog electronics. So when we focus on analog electronics, meaning the sensor, the sensor itself is an analog sensor because it collects photons and translates it into voltage, not... So I'm stopping him here. So what he is saying that basically his company only wants to work up to the analog level, sort of getting the voltages from the different cells in the sensor. And that's important when we are going to talk about what Sony is doing. One and zeros. So let me go back and let the him... The sensor itself is an analog sensor because it collects photons and translate it into voltage, not into one and zeros. The translation later into one and zeros and all the 
data processing, this is digital. That's a CPU so, somewhere else. Exactly. So, so, so in That's a CPU somewhere else. I will get back to that later. In your camera, for example, you have a sensor, which is an analog device, and you have also a, an image processor that is a digital device. And Luca also is how he's saying it, because I think he kind of knows that he's telling a half-truth here. And the image processor would do all the, the color perfection, white balance, and things like that. So for many years, I've been writing on the internet. Have I, have I been correct or wrong when I say it's a sad state of affairs that people are using smartphones to take baby pictures? So that's not important anymore, so we will uh, leave it at that. At that. And um, so let's um, talk a little bit of what he is uh, saying. So basically he's saying that his company, TowerJS, yes, um, is an analog company or digital, that depends how you define it. But his company makes sensors, by the way, 49% owned by Panasonic, um, that works up to getting a voltage for each of the photo uh, elements. And then that's it. He doesn't want to do anything more if I listen to him correctly. So let's, uh, let's talk about what Sony is now doing or wants to be, right? So basically Sony is working with something called stack sensor designs, right? That's the future in their opinion. And um, I will link to this article later on, but you can see already that that means that in the sensor itself, so not what he is talking about somewhere else a processing, uh, uh, but in the sensor itself, Sony is moving away from just doing the voltage. So the voltage part is, I would say in this case, the top part, right? So you can see, and we'll see that later, and I will link again to this article, which is two years old, um, and uh, basically was written when they were making the A9, and I think it's still extremely valid, but most likely Sony moved ahead and they are already in the second and the third generation of this. So that means it will even get worse, but you can see, that uh, in this uh, stack design they have on top of the pixel uh, layer, so that's the analog part that uh, the Tau just, uh, Tau just uh, manager was talking about, then it of course is digital because they have a next second layer which is DRAM and then a third layer which is the logic substrate layer where they actually are doing logic, right? So they are doing things with ones and zeros. So the, of course DRAM also takes ones and zeros, so what he is saying makes sense until you get to a level when you are talking about stack sensors, which in my opinion is where the future is going and where Sony is going. And um, you see that when we are looking at the sizes here, I will move myself a tiny bit to the other side. So here I go. You can see that they are talking about uh, the different sizes of these layers, right? So they are, they don't define how big uh, the, the the top layer is, but I'm guessing it's also like 20 uh, nanometers, 30 nanometers. And then we have like a uh, 30 nanometers sort of DRAM. And then we have a logic layer, but they're all in sort of a substrate. And the whole substrate, so the whole chip basically, is still a 130 micrometer, right? So that's basically about a tenth of a millimeter. Am I saying this correctly? Yes, a tenth of a millimeter big. So this whole thing, this whole stack that you are seeing is really, really small. To give a comparison, on top of this um, um, sensor is a glass uh, protective layer on the Sony, which is about a millimeter uh, thick. So that's 10 times thicker than this whole chip or this whole sensor, right? Now here, of course, and let's go to the next picture, uh, this one. Here, of course, you see it basically uh, um, um, in a, on a microscope, you see the different layers. On top of you can kind of recognize the, um, so let me use my mouse pointer over here. You can kind of see the pixel lenses on top there, right? So each pixel has this small sort of micro lens on top of it. And then you see the different layers, but you can see that this is all in sort of one chip layer. And why is this important? Because he just told us that his company is not making that. And as far as I know, there is no way that you can supply these different layers and then combine them later. So if a fab is making this, they have to make it in one go, right? And that's what makes it interesting uh, from another point of view. 
if we go back to this picture, is what will happen in the future. So Sony is indeed now splitting off some of these uh, parts because um, Sony has a lot of technology in the first layer, right? So the whole BSI and some other tricks that they are doing is probably in the first um, 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 yeah, sensor detection layer, which is also what are or the photon detection layer turning the photons into uh, electricity and then doing all kinds of neat tricks, but basically uh, up to a voltage sort of layer. Then they need to translate it to a digital signal and then they have to store it into DRAM. Now the article I will link will explain a lot more, but once it is there, um, basically Tower Jazz is not sort of involved anymore. So, and other companies are uh, having a lot of IP, so patent uh, information in that area. So let's talk about Nikon, right? So Nikon might have, uh, I doubt if they have, uh, they have some influence on the first layer, right? So the first layer, they have ideas and they have their own sort of tech that they bring in if to Sony. Please make us a sensor that does this extra sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, they probably trade patterns and uh, they use some Sony technology, they some, use some fab technology, they do a cross license or um, they order uh, a certain uh, designs and Sony makes this uh, top layer for them. Then the second layer is DRAM, which I'm guessing is kind of um, uh, normal, although you can sort of argue if you look at some of the latest tricks that Sony is doing, where they're going from 61 megapixels to 15 megapixels uh, somewhere in, uh, in, in this uh, area, where they are combining different tricks to get multiple exposures or different AGR sort of solutions. And we will see if that pops up in the uh, A7S3, for example. And then we have the third layer, which is basically the circuitry layer, where stuff is being processed, right? They are being prepared so that later on in the game they can be sort of uh, used in different uh, uh, ways. So uh, the interesting question now becomes who brings what and what fab is still able to build these things? And in my opinion, and please correct me in the comment, comments in the, if I'm wrong, but it won't be Tower Jazz. They just told us that they don't want to be in this business. Uh, at least openly they are talking about this at this moment. So maybe their fabs can be uh, combining, maybe that's why they started a cooperation with Panasonic to begin with, so that their, these fabs in the future can become a different sort of um, yeah, um, a type, uh, where um, they can indeed uh, combine, uh, uh, sorry I was just pushing a notification away, um, where they can, they can combine uh, these different layers, but to me it seems that only Sony and probably Samsung have both enough info, uh, experience in making sensors and Samsung would be a very interesting uh, partner if they jump back into the to this uh, uh, game, but they aren't at the moment, uh, on the most part, at least on, on bigger sensors, right? So on the phone area where also these tricks are being used, they are, but uh, we have not seen a return of Samsung into this area. So um, Sony uh, is the only one uh, game in town at the moment if Nikon wants to, for example, do what they are doing in, in A9, right? So if they want to have a similar camera, let's say it's 42 megapixels or 61 megapixels, and they want to go for a stack sensor design where I think the future is, the only game in town at the moment seems to be Sony. So uh, I will link to this article. Um, let me put it like this so that you can see it, which is a really interesting article talking about uh, this uh, technology. Um, and I will quickly scrub through it, but you can see that they are talking about um, that you really quickly want to give, get the data out of, uh, um, uh, or from the sensor, uh, unless you can go to a global shutter, but even then you have all this data that you need to store somewhere. If you want to downscale from 8K to 6K to 4K, uh, then you need to leave the data somewhere. It has to be digital, right? It has to be processed. Um, so what they are talking about in this article is how that would actually work and how um, that um, is done in the Sony sensors two years ago. We have no idea what tricks they are doing now, but you can bet your life that they are doing more tricks even uh, later versions of this. But you can see that they are talking about how this works. So um, yeah, that's why I was, um, uh, let me scrub to the... Total article so that you can see and they explain a little bit more 
how it works. Again, I will link this in the description um, so that you can see it. So the question becomes in these uh, next uh, sort of cameras that we are uh, talking about is what kind of tricks are Sony doing in the next video cameras, right? So let's assume, um, because I built this yesterday and made a video about it, let's assume that they have something uh, similar uh, like this uh, for the A7000 uh, series. Um, my guess now that we might see a low end replacing the A6000 because they might be running out of parts. That's it been being produced so long that maybe they don't have the parts anymore. They need to replace it, although it will, won't be a big money maker for them. So they might introduce an APS-C uh, um, high-end uh, video camera and then of course we are still waiting for the S3 and the A9 and especially the S3 and the A9 and maybe even the, the high-end APS-C if we see it, are they going to use this stack sensor technology and um, how are the others going to match that? It seems to me that they have a really tough call to make. Um, um, in this area. It also means to me that uh, Sony sort of splitting off the center um, um, uh, part of their company is not to uh, spin it out into a different company. I don't think it's a Japanese way to begin with, uh, although even if investors want it, doesn't mean that they are going to do it, um, especially if it's an activist uh, uh, um, um, investor. Um, I think it had more to do with uh, all the different um, um, uh, patterns and, and, and firewalling that they need to do to be able to convince Nikon and others to bring in uh, different chip layers because you can, even if you are a fab, like TM, TMC, uh, which I was just talking about, or if you're talking about Apple, if they hire Samsung, for example, to make a chip for them, um, that means that in these different layers, they can probably bring in different designs. But it, in my opinion, and again, somebody can prove me wrong in the, in the comments, but there is no way that you can sort of make uh, these layers in different fabs, right? It has to be built in one sort of uh, um, um, a fabrication process and then... Um, yeah, sold. So could Tower just do that in a foundry? Yes, but they don't seem to be wanting to do that. So maybe that will be a surprising thing, but we have not seen it. We have also not seen Sony share this tech technology to another company. As far as I know, again, in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe uh, the first one they would do it too, but uh, I have not seen any proof of this will be Fuji, right? Um, but I think the Fuji X-T3 and the uh, latest cameras is more showing the power what happens if you put a really powerful CPU behind a, a normal sensor, but it's not a stack sensor design. Um, so um, yeah, I think it has more to do about this licensing and, and patterns and making sure that if uh, Sony makes something for brand A that it doesn't get back to the camera division etc etc so thank you for listening hopefully this was useful and um, i wanted to sort of bring this in as sort of a counter argument into some of the stories i've been seeing uh, that uh, tower jazz or another company could make uh, these tech design uh, sensors and i don't think that's the case and i'm looking forward to what sony is going to do with this in technology um, so leave comments please uh, proving me wrong or agreeing or uh, providing me with more data. I will link uh, the article I used um, uh, in the description. And if you read it differently than I am, please also let me know. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.